Is Venom 3 a horror movie? Anyways, I just watched Venom 3, and by just watched, I mean I watched it last night. And, um... Sony made three Venom movies without Spider-Man. Wow. I don't like to be a hater on my uh, channel, and I don't consider myself to be a hater. I consider myself to be a disappointed Spider-Man fan, because I was not a fan of Venom 1. I thought it was kind of lame what they did to the character. On my planet, I'm actually a loser. Yeah, one of the coolest Spider-Man villains of all time is apparently a loser. Cool, great. And at the time, it really took me a moment to kind of get into, okay, this is the Venom that they're going with. The buddy cop sort of thing. The romantic, you know, like, rom-com, buddy cop, road trip sort of feel that these movies have. But that's all muddied down with like superhero epic stuff. And honestly, when it comes to Sony, that's the worst part about these movies. I don't like anything superhero related in these movies. I kind of just like letting the characters be. Because then we hop over to like Morbius and Madam Web, where it's all boring superhero stuff that we've all seen. Like, superhero fatigue is sort of an over-exaggeration of what's happening right now. But it's true. I mean, people are getting tired of this stuff. And the only things that were keeping it fresh were technically the Venom movies, um, but I would more so say it was Tom Hardy and the Venom dynamic. But anyways, the, I, in my opinion, my favorite one was Venom 2, I think. I'm trying to remember it. It was just fun to see Carnage. I like Woody Harrelson. I don't mind that Cletus Cassidy was odd. I don't read the comics. I, I thought he was cool. So yeah, I like that stuff. I like this, I, yeah. I don't, I, got, I gotta sneeze. <laughs> but so I didn't really care about Venom. They were passable. But that was really disappointing as a Spider-Man fan because A, when Mar when Sony would use these characters, they can't be used in the MCU. Or at least not for like some significant amount of time. So for example, we're not going to get Morbius in the next Spider-Man movie or Madam Web, which you pick D-listers. Why, why is this a problem? But Venom's kind of a problem because he's really cool. And we'll see what happens with Spider-Man 4. That would be really cool, but I want some street level. But now we have what seems to be the conclusion of the Venom trilogy, but maybe not be, probably not to be honest. Venom, The Last Dance. Why is it called The Last Dance? Because it's the ending and Venom dances. I think this movie was just as good as Venom 1, which I didn't care for, so I didn't care for this movie, unfortunately. I'm only talking about it because I think it's interesting to talk about the Sony Spider-Man movies and just kind of their mentality about it. And now starts the Venom 3 review or talk about. I, I don't like the word review. So the plot of Venom 3 is that after the events of Venom 1 and 2 and Spider-Man No Way Home, spoilers, Eddie Brock and Venom are now on the run trying to get to New York. Why New York? I don't know. Is it something Spider-Man related? That would have been cool. I wish we could have seen that. But the god of Venom, whatever, it, it's not really explained. Null, who is like the Thanos of Venoms, sends a bunch of aliens to go kill Venom and get this thing that he has. It doesn't really matter, it's just a MacGuffin. And then there's another plot with like some CIA stuff, which was confusing, which I'll get into. And then there was another plot with a road trip, which I'll get into, which was confusing. To be honest, I think this movie was just very messy. And I really appreciate the attempt, but I just, I wish we could just get like some villain stuff. Sony is so terrified to make their villains villains. Why is Morbius the living vampire sucking fake blood and helping? He's a vampire. This black goo demon from outer space shouldn't be like, Oh, on one planet, I was kind of a loser. I hate that line. Y you want a good Venom movie? Watch Upgrade. That movie, oh, brilliant. Watch that movie, it's so good. That's Venom. I get that you're going in the Lethal Protector direction. I'm not a comic book reader, but I know that just means anti-hero Venom. Fine, whatever, you do you. But this, it's just, all over the place, kind of like this video. Okay, here are my thoughts, here are my problems with the movie. Number one, why wasn't Null the main villain? Why did Null have to send a bunch of aliens to go fight Venom? Why didn't you just do Null? Like, what? why, are you, why aren't you cutting out the middleman? Is it because you're building up to like a big main villain? And are we getting a Venom 4? I don't know, like why did you, 
Like, it just feels like you were just waiting for something that's probably not going to come. And I'm not saying it's not going to, and I'm not saying it shouldn't. I'm just saying it didn't feel like there was more to the story. You ended it. It didn't feel like there was more to the story this movie. There's just like a bunch of loose threads in the movie, and I'll, I'll just hit on a few. There's an evil organization that is never specified. I thought we were gonna get answers in the end, but I should have known, it's a spum movie. There's also a bunch of symbiotes, and I don't get what they mean. Why weren't they like recognizable ones? Now, I say recognizable ones, I can't, rec I can't name any of them. There's just nothing, it's just random, it's just cannon fodder. It just felt kind of a wasted opportunity. Not that I'm like some Marvel simp, but this movie feels so anti-MCU in such a weird direction. I mean, not only are these movies just like, hey, screw you, we're gonna do our own thing, but also, like, and it's just small stuff that I don't get. Like, I believe they redesigned the sparkle, sparkle circles that happened in Doctor Strange because Venom is sucked through a portal back to his universe and it looks completely different. I don't, if, was that intentional? Because it doesn't look anything like it. And if you're trying to separate yourself from the MCU, then why are you so desperately trying to connect yourself to the MCU? And another thing that I have, I'm gonna say this, uh, is this number four or three, Some I don't know. Another thing that I had a weird issue with was that the actor who plays the lizard in The Amazing Spider-Man and in No Way Home is in this film as a completely different character, which is fine. He's a great actor. I'm happy he's getting work, but this is confusing. Why is a former Spider-Man alum playing a completely unrelated character to the plot, to his former character, to anything? Because when I saw the trailer, I got excited because I thought the implication was two things. One, we were in the Amazing Spider-Man universe, and thus, two, this character was like redeemed or resolved or was saved by the Spider-Men in the MCU. And Venom didn't get that treatment. Venom didn't get to be fulfilled or anything like that, I don't know. I thought they were gonna go in that direction and we were going to explore Venom without Spider-Man. And I think that would have been so cool to see the difference of a character before he meets the person he's supposed to meet. I don't know, I'm saying a bunch of words. There's just such an explosion of interest there that really excited me. Nope, he's just some guy on a road trip. Next, like my favorite parts of the movie, my favorite parts of the movie were when it was just Venom and Eddie talking to one another. Simple, simple, easy, enjoyable. I would also say that the movie could just start at the Vegas scenes. You, you could cut everything before it and you'd lose nothing, which means that there's 30 minutes of this movie that's really interesting or really like establishing anything. Oh my God, I have the codex and we need to stop the this and we need to do this. This is what my character needs to do. No, this is what my character needs to do. It's just so much, it, it, it's just like fluff in my ears. And I guess my final Final note is also the finale of this movie. I have never heard a worse needle drop in a movie. I don't have a problem with the song. I mean, I don't care for it, but it's okay. It just feels so random and off topic. It feels like somebody started playing like music on their phone in the theater while the movie was ending. And it could have been some magnificent ending speech, but no. All of this is to say, the Venom movies, they came and went so quickly, in one ear, out the other. I wish they just were connected to the Spider-Man movies, because I don't see why Sony and Marvel can't work together this way. Do you know what I mean? And you can connect it to the universe and make it one big happy story, which would be very exciting. As a fan, I'm desperate to see that stuff on the screen, because that would be so cool. But as a moviegoer, I mean, you're doing your thing. And your thing wasn't my cup of tea, but that's okay. It is some other people's cup of tea. And more power to them. But I'm going to commit the cardinal sin of a spum universe watcher. I'm a little bit excited for Craven. Not excited. I'm looking... I'm up... I'm slightly optimistic. We'll see what happens. Who knows? Maybe I'll talk about that movie too. But thank you for watching. Um, oh wait, don't go yet. I also wanted to talk about the spooky movies that I've seen this season. This was gonna be, uh, my schedule got shifted around, so I'm talking about the movies in this. And I'm including some spooky movies I saw in September because screw you, it's my list. I started the season with under wraps. I'm just gonna say what I'm doing now. I'm making a decom movie tier thing, whatever, and I'm watching all of them. I'm very excited for it. Although with my second job, I had to stop um, going as consistently as I, I've done. So I think I've only seen four. 
out of the hundreds, whatever. Next one was Halloween Town, all time classic. I love that movie. I mean, should I move over? I should probably move over. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I really enjoyed this movie. I can't wait for, uh, well, I mean, I say I can't wait for Beetlejuice 3, but I mean, they're probably gonna make it. It made so much money and apparently people are optimistic. Sounds good. Let's see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. I've been watching Agatha all along. It's a show that has gotten better with every episode and I really, really, really enjoy it. The finale is coming out in two days. So the last two episodes. So we've just seen the um, Patty Lapone episode. You know what I'm talking about. As stated in a previous video, I've seen Velma, the this Halloween needs to be more special. Mm -hmm. A lot of you guys are disliking that video. I don't know why. I mean, I do know why. I posted something positive about Velma on a sp on YouTube. <laughs> Does this count as a spooky movie? Joker fully do. It's kind of scary. And then because everyone was saying that the sequel was so good, I had to watch it. I watched Smile and then Smile 2. Great. I've been rewatching the Harry Potter movies. There's some spooky stuff. There's some ghosts. I made my friends watch Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. That was fun. And I finished... Venom 3. We'll see what else I watch. I was hoping to see It's What's Inside, Cato Lake, and Woman of the Hour. I don't think I'm going to see anything else for the rest of the season, but maybe I'll throw on like Halloween or like some spooky slasher from the past. Um, but yeah, that's just how my Halloween season's going. How has yours been going? Tell me in the comments. Engagement. Thank you for watching. Go see Venom 3 if that's a movie that interests you. It kind of interested me and I was disappointed, but still, if it interests you, go see it. Thanks for watching and I have one more video tomorrow for you. I'll see you next time.